Welcome back to 5 Minute Splunk. Today's video is creating a Linux virtual machine. Uh, this is video 2 in a multi-part series where we stand up a lightweight VM for developing Splunk apps, playing around with Splunk architecture, things like that. So what's on the menu? As always, we'll begin with some getting started links. We'll use VMware to create a custom virtual machine. We'll mount the ISO that we downloaded in the last video. And we'll install the operating system. We'll wrap up with some related videos and contact info. A couple quick links before we get started. First, my name is Josh. I used to work with the Splunk professional services team and I've been on site to many, many Splunk customers picking up best practices along the way. So to learn more about me and why I make these videos, click on the icon to the left. If you don't mind, please do me a favor and like this video. Um, unless I get enough likes, no one will ever be able to watch these tutorials. Next, a while back we launched the Big Data Developer Network. Basically, it's a chat room that connects Splunk professionals from around the world. It's the perfect place to ask technical questions, get real-time help, and generally just bounce ideas off one another. So if you use Splunk at your day job, don't work in a vacuum. Click on the icon to join our developer network today. And finally, I try to push out a couple of these videos every week. So if you like them, stay up to date by clicking on the icon to subscribe. All right, with that out of the way, let's put five minutes up on the clock. And today we have Dos Equis Man saying, I don't always develop Splunk apps, but when I do, I use a virtual machine. Ha ha, how appropriate. All right, let's get started. In the last video, we went out and we downloaded the CentOS ISO. Now for this demo, we're gonna be using VMware Fusion, but like I discussed earlier, uh, feel free to use VirtualBox or Parallels or any virtual machine software. The concepts are still the same. So let's find VMware. Here it is. Um, this version is VMware Fusion 6.x. And we're going to start by clicking Add and do a new. Now a dialog window pops up asking, hey, do we want to install from a disk image or import from existing? Now, believe it or not, we're not going to use either one of these options. Um, um, this usually works, but there are some issues that can arise. So the most fail-proof way to do it is create a custom virtual machine. So we'll click that and hit continue. Now it's going to ask us, hey, which uh, operating system is this going to be? And in our case, it's going to be a Linux CentOS. Now specifically, I downloaded the 64-bit version, but if you download the 32-bit, you'd click that one. So let's click continue. Uh, you see a couple defaults coming through. We will create a new virtual disk, and we'll keep the default of capacity 20 gigabytes. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to go out and create a 20 gigabyte file. It just means that potentially this virtual machine could grow to be 20 gigabytes. So we hit continue. We see a couple more default settings come through here. Um, the memory allocation is one gigabyte of RAM, and that's totally fine for what we're doing. Um, again, this is a real lightweight Splunk VM. Um, it's not unusual to have four or five of these up at a single time, so one gigabyte is perfect for what we're doing. We'll keep all the other defaults and click Finish. All right, now it wants to save it to disk. Again, I'm going to save it in my Virtual Machines folder, and I'm actually just going to name this CentOS 6.4 64-bit. And then we'll hit Save. All right. <clears throat> it wrote it out to the hard drive, and you can see that it automatically tried to start it up. Now, it doesn't know what to do yet, so it's just trying to boot from the network. Eventually, this will fail. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna stop the virtual machine. We're gonna go up to the top here and say, shut down. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna mount the disk image that we downloaded earlier. So we'll click on the disk icon and go to DVD CD settings. We are gonna enable it, and we want to choose a disk image. Uh, very simply, we'll click on go to our ISOs folder, and I want to pick the right one, which is 6.4, the newest. So I'll highlight it and click Open. Now we should be good to go. I'll close this window, and we'll go to Virtual Machine Startup. And voila! Instead of booting to network, it, try it actually boots to the mounted ISO. So we're going to use the first option um, called Install or Upgrade and hit Enter. 
In the interest of time, I'm gonna edit out all of these loading screens. Okay, the first screen we get to is a media check. And without a doubt, we will always do this. Um, when you're downloading ISOs, um, it's fairly common that they get corrupted um, as they download from the internet. So we are indeed going to test this. It'll go through, verify, and it was successful, which was great. But it also says that it was ejected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click back on the disk icon and make sure we re-enable it. All right, now we will click continue. Great, it finds the local media and boots to the install menu. So here we go. We'll start by clicking next. Now I live in the United States, so I'm gonna take most of these defaults. So I'm English, I'm US. Um, again, basic storage is all we need. Saying, hey, it looks like you have something already there um, in terms of disk, but we're gonna discard it and start over anyway. So click yes, discard data. It says, hey, what do you want the name to be? We're gonna call this one Splunk1, one, Splunk01. And we'll hit next. That's fine. Now, passwords. Um, for local development, it doesn't need to be very complex. I'm actually just gonna use password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, all lowercase, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Hit next. It'll complain saying, hey, that's real weak, but whatever, we're gonna use it anyway. All right, we're gonna take the defaults, we're gonna replace the existing Linux systems. Hit next. All right, now it's gonna say, hey, we're gonna write this to disk, which is fine because this is just our virtual disk. So click write changes. All right, it just finished up and it says, hey, congratulations, CentOS is, is complete. And now it's gonna ask us to reboot the virtual machine. So we'll click reboot. And with any luck, we will be at the command line interface where it says, hey, what's the login? Well, we are root and our password is password. Success. At this point, we can now unmount the, uh, the CD drive. So release your mouse, um, click on the disk drive, we'll go to settings. And from now on, we're just gonna turn this off because we don't need it at all anymore. We'll close this window. And that's it for this video. Keep the conversation going by checking us out on social media. Our username is 5 Min Splunk. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And thank you for watching this tutorial.